Hello YouTube, here we are again. This week we're gonna be talking about directing, or I'm gonna be talking about my experience with directing. I've directed a couple short films. Uh, I always say, uh. This is part of my growth as a person, is saying, I directed short films. I've also directed a feature film called Unicorn Store. I'm gonna talk about my experience directing that. Oh, also, <laughs> I have the garage door open because it's a stunning day. Um, we're gonna learn as we go. <laughs> the sound, the sweet sound of birds is too much, so I'm gonna project a little bit more. Okay, so, yes, I have mostly acted in things, but I have directed things as well. I directed two short films, as well as a feature called Unicorn Store. I'll be talking a little bit about my experience doing that, and hopefully there's some stuff in there that's helpful to you. To start, if you don't know about this sort of general movie making process, you have pre-production, which is everything before production, which is writing the script, getting the money, getting a line producer, they're the type of people that figure out how much everything costs, getting all of your crew, getting all your cast, getting all your locations, all that stuff. Then you have the production, which is you know, the part that we think of when we think of movie making, the filming of it. And then you have post, and that includes editing, and then there's sound design, and then there's coloring, so you can mess with the colors of the film, just like, you know, maybe you do with your, on your phone. So those are the processes that I'm talking about. Back in the day, um, when I was, you know, coming into my own as an actor, as a young adult, I really felt like directors had the power, that they were the ones that were sort of this, like, Oz-like figure that knew all the answers to everything. And with time, <laughs> I've learned that directors are human beings and they're making choices and they're making decisions and sometimes you just don't know. So I found it to be the greatest gift to say, I don't know. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna back, back it up a little bit. Unicorn Store was a film that I directed a couple years ago. I also starred in it, so it was kind of a specific situation of how I handled both being in front of and behind the camera, which I guess has just gave, given me so much practical experience for this YouTube channel. Little backstory on, on Unicorn Store. I had auditioned for it years previously. I wanted it so bad. I cared so much about the story. It's about um, a young woman who wants to be an artist, is told that her art is worthless, has to end up, get, gets kicked out of art school, moves back home with her parents, and gets these mysterious invitations that tell her that she's invited to, she's the only person in the world invited to this place called the Unicorn Store, where if she does these certain things that this magical man, played by Samuel L. Jackson, uh, tells her to do in a specific order that then she'll get her very own unicorn, which is her childhood dream. I auditioned for it. I got close, but I didn't get it. <laughs> and it never quite sat right with me. So anyway, for whatever reason, um, there's millions of reasons why this happens all the time, but the movie fell apart and never got made. Years later, the producer came to me and said, you know, you really had such a passion for the story and cared so much about it. Would you like to direct it? Which was unbelievable, which was a thrill. So diving into the directing process for a feature film, there were some aspects that were completely new. I knew of production being an actor and I even knew some of the pre-production process that the little bits that I had been let into, but there were certain parts that I didn't understand. A couple of things that um, I learned in pre-production. So one of the specific things that comes to mind is a meeting I had about the background actors I, in the film. I didn't realize that I got to choose even those details of what the world looks like. I got to dictate and say like, listen, like I wanted to look representative of the world. So like I said, Oh, oh, okay, picking, picking your team. This is the number one thing, in my opinion, in terms of directing. Because I'm the type of person that if I'm hired for a job, I wanna be entrusted with it. I don't wanna be micromanaged after the fact. We can be collaborative, we can disagree, but at the end of the day, if you've hired me, you're hiring me to be the expert on this character, and therefore I feel like I should be able to run with it. So I took my time when it came to my hires for first AD, editor, DP, production designer, art director, costume designer, hair and makeup. I wanted all of them to be open to what we were up against. What we were mainly up against was budget restraints, which is what I think every movie deals with. With that, creating a culture where it's okay to have fun that's where creativity flourishes. You are in charge of creating a safe place for people to be unsafe. So in terms of making a movie, 
think about um, every person that's on set is there doing their job, taking a creative leap. We want it to be okay to make a mistake. We learn from them, we grow. But if you have people that are great problem solvers, that's really the key. I think filmmaking is a team sport and we should view it as such. The other aspect of that in the pre-production phase was planning out way far ahead of time what everything was gonna be. I had the luxury that the lead was myself, so I knew what I was gonna do. So I didn't have to have separate meetings <laughs> with my lead actor. I just had them in my head. And so I can dictate and say to my DP, for example, these are the beats, this is when it's gonna emotionally turn, and we can figure out how the camera can support that. So, with the actual production, segueing into what I just talked about, my first AD was absolutely incredible, and she did the math of how much time I would lose in a day if I looked at the monitor. What that means is, is it's a, we can do playback now. She told me if I did that, um, I would lose about an hour each day spending time reviewing tape. And I was like, well, I think I would just rather have that hour of taking, doing more takes in various directions and trying different things than continually looking at the monitor. Just full disclosure, I don't hardly ever look at a monitor when I'm filming anyway, so it wasn't a huge decision for me. Now if we wanna talk about post. Post is crazy. Post is when you edit the film, so it's everything afterwards. You're, you're finding the movie there, really. You have tons of puzzle pieces and you're trying to put it together. The editing process, it's super intimate. So love your editor, not just the work that they do, but the person that you're editing with. I had the most incredible team, I loved it. And it ended up being one of the most maddening, exhilarating, and interesting parts of the experience. One piece of advice, if you were editing a performance of yourself, my editor did the most incredible thing on day one when I came into the edit. The second I came in and she showed me a rough cut, she referenced the character on screen as her. When she does this, when she went there, and I felt so at ease because I realized what we were talking about is an entity separate from myself. That person on the screen was an actor. It was not me. And so it allowed an objectivity and allowed us to speak openly about when things were working or weren't working and didn't hurt my feelings. So it was great. It, it was the part of the process that was the most emotional for me. So I remember having this moment where I had had this great high, I had done my first cut, my like, you know, the director's cut, the first pass, and I was like, I'm the best director ever. And then I showed it to people and they were like, mm, this doesn't work, that doesn't work, and you're just like, I'm the worst director. And it's so emotional because you realize that you're just building your world. You know, I built Unicorn Store as a world that I wanted to live in, and so for anybody to not want to enjoy the world that I had built as much as I did was so painful. Just keep that in mind. It is, like I said, the best, the heart, like the most fun, and it was also the moments that I just felt like a loser. That will happen. That can happen in pre-production, that can happen in production, that can happen when you're locked on the film. I think it's quite normal to have moments when you question yourself and you go like, am I doing this right? Because there isn't rules, you know? We don't need to be beholden to any sort of rules. And actually what I think is so exciting is the fact that, you know, I'm sitting here in my garage filming this off of two digital cameras. I could go take these and, and make a movie. You could do it with your phone. That's what we so desperately need. We need people that are breaking the rules, that are breaking boundaries, that are doing what we consider impossible or against the rules. Like, please join us. So I felt like I broke rules making the movie. You may watch Unicorn Store and think I did it. You may, I don't know, think whatever you want. At this point, I've heard it all. But for me, it felt like I was breaking the rules. And so when the film came out, it meant that some people were like, oh my gosh, you know, this is, this feels like it was made for me. And then for other people, they were like, this is trash. What was the point of making this? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it was amazing. I loved it. I loved the journey of that. You don't do it for like the reception afterwards, whether it's good or bad. You just do it from your heart. In looking back, if there was anything that I would change about the process, I would have asked for more shooting days. 
My fun fact, I guess, about the budget of the film is that it was just an arbitrary number. I was in a meeting with a potential financier and I thought that it was gonna take a much longer process. And basically in this meeting, he said, well, um, what's the budget? And I just said, I just threw out a number and he was like, okay, and then that's what it was. I had no business saying what the number was and in hindsight, I wish I would have just said, I don't know, can I have somebody do a budget? Because then I would have known that I didn't have enough money to have enough days. What was the hardest decision you have to make in the filmmaking process? One of the hard decisions about the film was choosing the location of the unicorn store, of deciding what that looked like, what that magical space looked like with our budget restraints. And then we did actually find this beautiful spot for when there's the reveal of the unicorn that we were super excited about, totally set on doing. And then, <laughs> then, like right before we were about to start shooting, we learned that horses can't go upstairs. The location we had, there was many stairs. So we at the last second had to change things. Okay, I want this really spectacular moment. The whole movie's building up to this. How can I make it like exceptional given that I have like a small budget and I can only get the horse into this room? It was really just, one meeting. Let's get a fog machine. Let's use prisms. And we ended up coming up with all of these ideas that I don't think we would have come up with had we had just stuck with the original location because we would have just leaned in on like, the location's beautiful. There are times as a director where it's hard that you're the boss because there's nobody above you or behind you telling you what to do. But for the most part, I loved it. One thing that I will leave you with, I think this applies to anybody in any any profession. Get really comfortable with saying that you don't know. It's like the best thing you can do. When I think of that, I think about times on set where someone would come to me and be like, Brie, what should we do with blah, blah, blah? You know, where should the camera go? Or what should this look like? What should this be? Sometimes I'd have the answer and I know exactly what it was, but in the times when I didn't, I'd turn to the person who was the expert in that. And that was just so consistent over and over again. Whenever I was presented with the I don't know, it didn't mean that I was a failure. It didn't mean that I was a loser. It didn't mean I wasn't like a good boss or I didn't know what I was doing. It meant that I was allowing my teammate to have an opportunity to flourish. I think it's important and an incredible aspect of it to allow your team to actually be a team. And it takes being humble and it takes admitting that you don't know. But if you can do that, if you can get comfortable with the I don't know, Gosh, amazing things happen. Well, this was just kind of a beginning ramble. I'm happy to answer any more specific questions. If you leave them in the comments, maybe I'll do a part two if there's things that I didn't cover in this. I don't know. <laughs> I hope that you're happy and safe in your body. Sending you so much love. See you soon. Bye.